Let me see if I can. I found this pan. I'm thinking it's too windy, and sometimes I do the news updates. So hopefully you'll hear this. I'll try and go short. Uh, the main news for today is really what should not be the main news. We'll talk a little bit about issues. Basically, in a lot of the politics that have gone on this last year, and people of Mr. Mueller and Comey and McCabe, and this will be an indictment on all of the media. But today, the big news is there was a particular man called the Inspector General, and he was investigating. You hear Mr. Trump say, this is a witch hunt and these guys are crooks or so forth. Pretty much the Inspector General showed that to be true about the man by the name of Andrew McCabe, who was the Assistant FBI Director along with Mr. James Comey. And then a little politics, a little news, but the Inspector General report, parts of it, they investigated pretty much whether or not these people behind the scenes are really doing criminal stuff, like Mr. Trump claims. Their own investigation showed that. And it showed it, and they're not focusing too much on a particular thing, but the former assistant FBI director by the name of Andrew McCabe, who was fired like two days before he'd get his full pension, the media and many people jumped on that. And But what this man basically was fired for is certain FBI agents had the authority to speak to the press. But what happened in his case is he leaked illegally information, I think it was to the Wall Street Journal. And then when they investigated whether or not Mr. McCabe was he the source, the illegal source of leaking this stuff, and he was, and he lied multiple times before the FBI, his own FBI. So that's basically what they showed. Now that's enough for him to have criminal charges. Some of that even ranks higher than the stuff that they're doing with Mr. Trump right now. Okay? If they had stuff, okay, now why is that kind of somewhat important? James Comey, who's the former FBI director, his big book is going to come out like in a day or two. And he's been on the media. And the, and the book, some critics of Mr. Trump or even supporters of Mr. Trump, they thought maybe James Comey would have a, a bombshell, like he would say something that we would realize, oh, there is more criminal activity. He did indeed have that. It's against the former Attorney General Loretta Lynch. And it's also implications of him because Mr. McCabe, I read the, sta I read the article from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, no, the New York Times, but it's on all of the major news sites. But the man, McCabe, who worked under Comey, his, he and his lawyer insist that Mr. Comey is lying and that Mr. McCabe leaked these things to the press with Comey's knowledge. But Comey has denied that publicly before Congress. So you have a real possibility that both James Comey, Andrew McCabe, and what James Comey wrote in his book about Loretta Lynch, that they are all facing criminal liability. And I find it interesting because all of these people, Mr. Comey also admitted in the book, the excerpts that have been released, I'm not going to read the book. He admitted the reason they handled Mrs. Clinton in various investigations on her the way they did, he said they did it because they thought she was going to be the president. And because they thought she was going to be the president, in essence, they did not charge her with crimes that a lot of people in the legal community thought she should be charged with. He says that in the book. He also talks about thinking that there was no chance that Mr. Trump would win. And so that played a role in the way they investigated. There's enough out there in that excerpts. Now, the parts that are despicable and deplorable that you, the media, there were interview clips with George Stephanopoulos, uh, ABC, one of the main news outlets. 
I heard the clip, and you should never release, you should have never had that in the public domain. One of the things that Mr. Trump, I remember during the whole last year and a half, there was false information that Hillary Clinton and the De Democratic National Committee paid for. And they paid Russian operatives, and they used a British spy by the name of Steele, who, in that use of Mr. Steele, he's not a registered lobbyist and he's a foreigner, he himself broke the law. But what they got as campaign uh, stuff was that there's a, a video, they said, of Mr. Trump in a hotel in Moscow in the past where Mr. Trump hired prostitutes and had these prostitutes pee on top of him on a bed. Okay? That's a bad thing to put out there unless it was true. When this came to Mr. Trump's attention, and the way it did, I can't do it all, but Comey was the one that came to Trump early on and said, this is something we have and we want to let you know about it. Trump is rightfully mad because over a period of time Comey and others said there's no proof that any of this is true and what Trump asked because the media illegally had this and the media illegally reported this about after he got elected they still brought this up time and time again and Trump honestly asked and said if you can show that this is not true because the media is reporting it over and over and over. He says, if you found it's not true, Mr. Comey, tell the public. It's in the media and it's everywhere else. And the fact that Trump asked Mr. Comey, clear this up, because it could affect my family and it could affect my wife. And Trump supposedly said to Mr. Comey, even if my wife thought there was a 1% chance that this would be true, it would, it would affect our marriage. It would affect my family. And this is all in the media. And because Trump rightfully asked Mr. Comey, if you have shown that there's no truth behind this, just tell the public that. And they used that to say that Mr. Trump was trying to illegally influence an investigation. That's in the story. And then George Stephanopoulos asks Mr. Comey in the interview, do you think it's possible that Trump had hookers pee over him on a bed in Moscow? Now understand, this is all considered unverified, and it was all false information that Mrs. Clinton paid for. And this is Comey's public response that all the media played. He said, well, it's possible that Trump had prostitutes piss on him in a bed in Moscow. It's a disgrace that you have done that. You, the media, have done that and given play. And another interesting thing that was leaked in the book is it's quite unbelievable because I think Comey, Andrew McCabe, and others are not, and including Loretta Lynch, are facing criminal charges. But it's a manipulation in this country. Why Loretta Lynch? Mr. Comey said that Loretta Lynch, she met with Mr. Clinton on the tarmac on an airport during the investigation of Hillary Clinton. And she sat with him for maybe 45 minutes. And a lot of people thought, oh, that's a conflict of interest because she's the attorney general under Mr. Obama. But Mr. Comey says in his book, an excerpt says, there is other stuff that's now classified that the public and the media don't have yet that in essence is gonna implicate Loretta Lynch in criminal stuff. He put that out there. So you have all of these people, McCabe and his lawyer, saying, Comey's lying to you, and we have texts and emails proving it. They are all implicating themselves in criminal things. And there is no bombshell in the book, but there's salacious stuff in the book. And one other thing in the book, during the campaign, Marco Rubio made a statement that he thought would get Mr. Trump mad when they were all campaigning. And it had to do with hand size. And he basically said Trump had small hands. And people behind the scenes believe that's a, re a reference to the size of a, a man's penis. Okay? 
course, that's stupid and ridiculous to bring any of that up. And Mr. Marco Rubio, who's a Christian, who was running for president, he apologized later on and said that was going lowball. He shouldn't have done it. James Comey puts in his book, My Hands Are Bigger Than Mr. Trump's Hands. This is a disgrace. And the media is trumpeting this as something big. Now, last night, there was one of the top Russian scholars who's a professor out of Princeton University in New Jersey. For the media who's so uninformed, Princeton's one of the classic universities in our country. And it was founded by Christians who come from a particular the theological slant called Reformed. They believe in the Reformed doctrines of the faith, sovereignty and grace and things of that nature. And Princeton has got a great history, okay? The famous movie, by the way, uh, oh, I forget now what, what the guy's name was, but he was also a Princeton uh, professor. John Nash, John Nash, for just the media that's always uninformed about everything. They talk about hand size and is it possible that somebody peed on a bed and you give top coverage of that. What a disgrace. So, the top Princeton man last night on Fox News, he said, we are so close. He's the professor of Russian studies. His name is Cohen, not to be confused with Trump's lawyer whose offices were raided the other day. But he says, we're closer to World War III than ever before. And you know, the media really didn't report. We have 10 particular planes, doomsday planes. We refer to them as doomsday planes. And these are planes for the U.S. government to put up in the air in order to do military command and military nuclear command from the air, meaning if you think the country might be hit with a nuclear strike, the U.S., these planes take off. They have the capability of like being 150 hours in the air and all. And the reason for all that is where there's a possibility of a threat that the U.S. will be hit with a nuclear strike. Do you know the other day we put one of those in the air? And I believe it's the first time since 9-11. Our country does not go into that type of an emergency mode unless we believe it's possible that there could be a nuclear attack on the United States of America. And the last time that plane went up, as far as I know, was on 9-11, when we thought our country possibly was under a foreign attack, World War III. And that went up the other day. And that just shows you the seriousness of that particular story. And I don't think many of you probably were even aware that that plane went up the other day. So that's the news. That's the real news. But we're going to be consumed with the other stuff. They arrested local news. They did arrest. We had a tragic uh, home invasion and murder of a couple about two weeks ago. Maybe a week ago. We had a few of them, but this one was in the news first. They arrested the man. I think he's an 18-year-old man. That's some of your local news. And so I'll just do this as an update. I'm, I'm not sure if you heard any of this. But that's just... Uh, I, I would prefer to, for the media not to even ask questions like they did. For the media to have not... Uh, Mr. Comey, it's an amazing thing. He's, I believe he's going to be criminally liable for some of the things that are coming out. And it just so happens it's the same time with the recent the release of the book. Because of the way a lot of our investigations and our government courts all have to end up, they cover for one another. And there are many statements this last few months by John Brennan and others, Chuck Schumer basically saying, oh, the deep state will get you. And you can see how they covered for one another. They covered up crime, but they're also going after other people for the same people with a history of criminality. I could title this, Is it possible that James Comey is engaged in sex with the teenage boys? Is there evidence he has? No. Can you imagine if I titled it? And I gave world news coverage to the possibility that Mr. Comey sometime in his 
life engaged in homosexual activities in 1934. Is there evidence of this? As far as I know, no. But it's possible. And that's what the media was focusing on. Mr. Cooley, is it possible that Mr. Trump, even though you yourselves, the FBI, investigated the source and Hillary Clinton and the team put that information into the public view for a year now? And you believe somehow, because Mr. Trump was concerned that it would affect his marriage, he said there, even if there's a 1% chance that Melania would believe it, it would be a lot of stress. And you're using that in your media to say, look at Mr. Trump, try to cover up the crime. Mr. Comey and McCabe and all of them should immediately be indicted for public crimes.